My vision is not just making modest changes around the edge. It is transforming American society. So when I use the word socialist, and I know some people are uncomfortable about it, I say that it is imperative that we create a political revolution, and I hope you will be part of that movement, because if you are, we can, in fact, transform this country. So as American voters oh, consider oh, oh, oh. whether... Why do we want to transform this country? This, this phrase that Obama used, and he transformed this country. Into what? This is why I say over and over again, these people hate America. They hate our ancestry. They hate the framers and the founders. They hate the Constitution and the Declaration. Transform America into what? From the most beneficent, diverse, free country on the face of the earth, with the most goods for the most people, embracing the most fantastic economic model, and transform us into what? Give me an example. What the hell is he talking about? Go ahead. To sign up for part two of Sanders' political revolution, they should consider whether this time it really will be different. They really were talking about a transformation of society. Healthcare in Nicaragua is now free. It is terrible. It is very primitive compared to what we get. But they now have it free. You know, healthcare sucks in Nicaragua, but it's free. And of course, if you open your mouth, you get a bullet in the head and you don't get any health care. I mean, this, these are police state comments, and that's what Bernie, uh, Bernie Sanders is. And, of course, the Democrat Party media love guys like him and AOC and the rest of them <clears throat> that tear at the very fabric of this society. This is a bad man. He is a Marxist. He's been a longtime Marxist. He's been wrong about everything. And he's one of the leading candidates in the Democrat Party, which tells you about the Democrat Party in addition to what they've done to President Trump and the Constitution and impeachment and all the rest. And speaking of that, the Republican leadership announced yesterday, we don't have 51 votes to dismiss the articles of impeachment against the president. You'll recall right here, I have said from the beginning that these articles should, if, if they wind up in the Senate, should be immediately dismissed. I also said that Nancy Pelosi's delay empowers the majority leader in the Senate, Mitch McConnell, to hold them null and void. He didn't have the courage to do that. Now we have Republicans like Collins, Murkowski, Romney's on the record openly, Cory Gardner and others, uh, Lamar Alexander, who are openly stating that, yeah, maybe we should hear some witnesses. We didn't even do that during the Clinton impeachment. And so this is what happens. We have these babblers in the uh, Republican Senate, where the Republican House stood together, shoulder to shoulder, man and woman, against the unconstitutional effort to depose a constitutionally duly elected president. And you have Romney, yeah, maybe we should hear a witness and the others. So they're prepared to give their imprimatur, the credibility of the Senate as an institution, to an unconstitutional impeachment, to unconstitutional articles. And it's unbelievable to me when the Senate is set up to protect society, our country, from a rogue house under this impeachment process. 